In the top right side, we got ourselves a blue Zerg player for the Dragon Phoenix Gamer Group. He is... Dark. In the bottom left side, we got ourselves a red Terran player fighting for, well, himself. Proven that he is definitely able to take some great games against the Zerg player earlier today. Will he be able to do it against Dark? Is he going to be able to qualify? He is beyond. The two injured old men playing video games. Oh. Oh, my back. Oh, my, my liver. No. Oh. <laughs> you can hear squeaks and cracks from their bones as they're playing. They're still beating all the all the youngsters as well while they do it while they do so. <laughs> Which is the most impressive part. Cause DRG ZVT is top level. Yeah, it really is. It really is. I think Honestly, Bjorn is kind of happy that he's playing against Dark here instead of DRG. DRG has been proving himself so much recently that it's getting kind of scary. It's getting kind of scary, the amount of uh, overall great games that DRG is being able to, uh, to give to us. I mean, he beat Cure as well earlier on today, so... You must be feeling pretty <laughs> pretty fine about not having to continue onwards as much. Oh, Dark, you sneaky little man. Look at that. Trying to hide some of the game pieces here. The Roach Warren in the back side of his uh, main base. Looking to go for the aggression here now. It's been a while since I've seen the Roach attacks, the all-ins, working out. Will it be able to do so over in this game uh it's gonna be rough especially without the evo chambers the plus one plus one usually that is a part of it there is a nasty ramp that he has to fight himself up towards beyond trying to get rid of this overlord but has to be careful links are on the prowl metabolic boost about to finish up can make life rather difficult here looks like he does have enough uh, marines to hold back the initial zerglings but of course, these roaches on the way. That is going to be the real meat of the fight. Bjorn needs to figure out that this is coming his way. And with these circling at his front, it doesn't look like he will. He skipped the Reaper. He skipped every bit of scouting. And this may be why Dark has decided to go for something like this. Super aggressive play right now. We still don't have any bunkers trying to go up in this uh, moment in time. Hey, um, Starport's flying over towards the uh, the reactor here to get himself double medifacts. Now he sees these roaches. I feel like he may just want to evacuate the low ground here. Go towards the top side. Start making bunkers there. Or is he actually going to be able to hold off here? He's holding his own. He's doing very well. Even without Stimpak, he's actually just holding this off. He's doing a great job. Okay, a Ravager did get created. Needs to be careful. Don't get hit by the Biles. But it looks like he's actually going to be able to hold this, right? He's losing some workers, sure. But this is a very, very committed all-in from Dark. And he gets absolutely slept down, man. That is disgusting. Two Medivex on the field now as well to help out to heal up these uh, Marines. And any type of follow-up attack from Dark is even less likely to work now. How did he hold that? That is like, whoa, whoa, all right. All right, no upgrades on those Marines, by the way. Not a single one. No wall off, no bunkers. No AoE splash damage, nothing. He was spending money on two Medivex that weren't even in the fight. I'm impressed. I am very impressed. Um, great target fire there by Bjorn. I think that was a big deal about uh, for that hold. Right, how he just was able to continuously stay on top of one roach. Just target fire with all those marines. Fantastic stuff. Right, here is the first bit of aggression coming out of Biondo. Is he just going to throw away this lead? I don't think so, but... It's, uh, it's the start of a throw, right? Sending your units across the field. Or a potential throw, I suppose. Or, you know what, just securing the lead. That could happen here as well. They do get spotted by that Overlord, so the Roaches and the Queens will be able to get in a good position here. Yeah, I don't think you want to unload at this moment in time. It's just going to set up shop somewhere else and 
it's absolutely fine. Still. Alright. Uh, Doc? I mean, even with it, with this drop not doing any damage, he was forced to make more roaches, he was forced to make more zerglings. And he may even have to make even more of them, as Bjorn is trading out favorably here against these links. And that is keeping Doc's drone count very, very low. That's all Bjorn wants to do right now. In he comes. More Medivax this time around. There's no roaches here to help out. The Queen's not target firing the Medivax. And all the Queens do get picked off. That is a disturbing amount of damage. I think we may have Dark over droning a little bit here. He may have done the greedy a bit too much. And GG is called. Guess you don't need to scout. I don't guess you don't need to scout as Terran versus Zerg. Because if they all in you, you just have a ton of uh, Marines ready to, to gun it down. <laughs> the firing squad. Oof. Oof. Dark. That was a... Uh, that was a costly loss right there. Putting Bjorn on match point. Getting himself in a very awkward situation. If he loses one more game, he's out of the tournament. If Dark doesn't drone, he's dead anyway. That's true, it's true, but at least he has somewhat more of a fighting chance there. Instead of just dying straight off the bat, he, he buys himself some time. Does it, will it bring him victory? I don't think so, but it's a bit of a band-aid solution at that moment in time. He pretty much was dead after the field roached a Zergling attack, you know, as a lot of people will say. And I don't think you're wrong. He, he put himself very far behind, but... We've seen people make a comeback happen, uh, make a comeback happen before, um, you know. And to make a comeback happen, you need to ensure that you don't lose all those queens, you don't lose all those drones, and you stabilize on as many drones as you can get. If you get a bit too many, you know, you just get stampeded over by a couple of uh, marines because that wasn't even a lot of marines, honestly. Um, all right. Here we go. In pro level, you get so far behind, you probably... Yeah, you're probably dead. This is true. This is true. Most likely, you will die. That is 100%. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you have to make these games count. And I'd be lying if I haven't seen bigger comebacks still in, uh, in the pro scene. He's... You know, when it does come to these Korean top-tier dogs, though, it's it becomes less and less likely, of course. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. And, I mean, Dark is one of the players. Or at least he used to be. That we used to command for being able to play from a position where he was behind, right? This is what made him famous. This is why he was one of the top-tier Zerg players. Because whenever he did fall behind and other Zergs, you would just write him off. Be like, alright, well, they're dead. They're gone. They're out of here. They may as well GG and tap out. Dark would always, you would always still be able to somewhat find a bit more extra value here and there. And suddenly start equalizing stuff out again. Onion Tears, why do you feel like Dark has been coming down on his level lately? I think it is probably the injury. Or, oh, yeah. He may be a little bit demotivated overall now as well because his, his results have been lacking, right? He is a very prideful player, I would say. Somebody that does not like to lose in the slightest. I know that is, you know, talking about a lot of players, but he in particular. He's made bold claims such as... I want to be the name everybody talks about. When you say StarCraft 2, my name will follow straight afterwards. He is the player that, you know, had these massive aspirations and was willing to just continuously shout them out as well in the interviews and such. That, you know, he, he fully was believing in himself that he was going to be able to achieve that stature, that level of play overall. And, I mean, if you then start falling behind, you stop getting high places in tournaments you start dropping early well relatively early from your previous results in the gsl right well pretty darn early actually right that's gonna gnaw at you that's gonna that's gonna 
corrode your motivation or it's going to give you an extra boost thinking, all right, well, I got to turn it up to 11. It all comes down to what kind of personality you have. Armani, Solar, Ragnarok are at least the same level as Dark at the moment. Maybe. Maybe you're right. It's hard to argue with. Dark still, though, more of a mythology around him. More of a legend. He's been able to prove himself before this time. A lot better than those other players, right? Very well-respected player in the scene overall. Somebody that you hate to see dropping down. In a place where you're like, oh, man. You used to play so much... Well, not so much better. Just... just Quite a bit better. <laughs> I don't want to go overboard with this. He's still an insane Zerg. He's still very, very good at the game overall. It's not unthinkable that he takes games of Beyond either. I mean, that first game, we're putting a lot of a lot of overall value on that game, but that was just a roach attack, right? That filled. That was it. Guess there is another roach attack coming in, but. It was a two-base roach attack, and it was a it was a clever ploy. It wasn't too bad. Beyond has always been Dark's nemesis, anyway. Really interesting. He did some crazy stuff, yeah. But after balancing infested, I uh, didn't surprise much anymore. Hope he gets some new ideas soon. Hmm, I think infested still can make some work, some headway. I know we're all laughing at Microbial Shroud over and over again, but honestly, I think, you know what, at some point, people might start using it, and we're going to be like, wow, all right, why has never anybody used this ability? Why have we been making fun of this ability for so long? It's pretty strong. Yeah. Well, he's not out of it just quite yet, guys. He is still sitting here. He's still trying his best. He's playing against Bion, one of the top dogs in Terran right now. And we'll have to wait and see what he gets, uh, gets achieved against a behemoth of a Terran right here. Wasn't quite able to beat DRG in the ZVZ, but... I mean, DRG has been continuously improving as well. DOG was a predecessor of Dark anyway, when it came to being the top dog of the Zerg race. He paved the way and then Dark came in and started wrecking face. Brief spread here, getting quite, uh, quite heavily denied right now. Dark going for the plus one, plus one. Road speed is about done. Still making drones, though. I am expecting a fourth base to come out here as soon as he realizes there is a fourth, uh, third base for Bjorn on the way. Don't think he's going to be playing a super aggressive game right now. I'd like to see a bit of extra tech coming in to play, though, for him. I mean, roaches are good, but against Bio, against Bjorn, you're not just going to be able to carry on through with roach ravages here. Burrow and Tunneling Claws? Burrow and Tunneling Claws? Wait, that's Tunneling, right? Yeah, that is Tunneling Claws. I'm always like, isn't it Drilling Claws? No, 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 no. A drill is mechanical. That's how you remember. Uh, this, is a, this is a very awkward battle. Ring around the rosy with these Marines over here. Gonna be able to be picked up once more and uh, sk skadoodle, skadaddle. I'm out of there. Run the other way. And load once more. This is a pretty nice corn cave here for uh, for Bion, but didn't quite have all those uh, ducks in a row. Those marines still a bit clumped up on top of one another, behind one another. Goes all in in like one to two minutes. Yeah, it seems that way, huh? Nidus swim. There it is. Drone top relatively hard. There is still another base on the way as well, but 
This will be quite a committed attack here. He needs to do damage. With that fourth base on the way as well, though, it may just be for uh, reinforcing with a lot of links. Ensuring that he can send those queens to cross, of course. That could be the reason as well. Right, there's the burrow. Uh, tunneling claws, there we go. Has been completed. Let's see if Bion is aware of this. Let's go actually on his camera right now. Did he see? He's unseaging a siege tanks. He may just be going in. I don't think he saw. He's definitely not seeing this. Roaches are coming into those uh, mineral fields right now. That's going to buy him a lot of time for this attack that's coming in for Bion. Bion? Bion is moving backwards with the siege tanks. That's when you see those roaches in the third base. They do get caught out by those siege tanks there. There is an attack for Bion as well on the other side. There's a Nidus Worm into the main base at the moment as well. 22 workers are going down. Making some headway. The drops are also getting not their value at this moment in time. A lot of roaches coming in for the third base. The siege tanks are still standing strong there. The night is not work. Going unscouted a little bit here. The bile's going on top of the... Huh, interesting. Some missile turrets here now. Though. Quick reaction from beyond and... Jeez Louise, that is a lot of firepower in those siege tanks there. Together with the marines underneath. More and more roaches are coming in here, so he is quite heavily committing to this. Feels like he will be trying to finish it off right now. He needs to get more damage done. With this amount of roaches that are coming in, he's getting plus two, plus two as well. Another knight his head is coming out. We'll be able to rotate back and forth between these two locations very nicely now. Wherever the fire is not going all too well, he can just hop into that knight and go the other way. Okay, good target there for Bjorn. We'll be able to shut that down for now. Another Nidus Worm immediately afterwards, though. Gonna get created. The micro on the uh, dark still pretty good. The burrowing and unburrowing. This is looking like it will be able to do get uh, get all the damage that Dark was looking for. 54 workers have gone down. The main base still under a little bit of pressure right now as well. Doesn't look like it will be cleaned up. Doesn't look like it will be cleaned up, guys. I think we're going to go into a game number three. GG is called. Very well done. Roach all ins. Still strong AF. It's been a while since I've seen a roach attack be that dominating, though. That was uh, that was very sick to see. Those roaches just going in with the tunneling claws. You don't see that every time. Some cool stuff there from Dark. Uh, combining the tunneling roaches as well with the Nidus Worm. Cool, cool things. Cool things happening there. Very often when you see the plus one, plus one roach timing attack, it is just going to be all those roaches and ravagers ramming their way onto a ramp, trying to get on top of siege tanks that way. But, uh, yeah. Or just a single nidus worm somewhere in the, in the main base being like, alright, well, if, if it gets created, that's good. I'm gonna potentially win. If it gets spotted, it doesn't. Well, what's for the star? If you get, um, if gets you somewhere in the siege, you just die anyway. Yeah, yeah. Your your siege tanks. It's very important that they are sieged up. This is uh, definitely true. Still a cool strategy, though, in my book. Still a cool strategy. I mean. If you think about it as well, those roaches just burrowing into all the bases. You get yourself the uh, the opportunity, perhaps, because the, the siege tanks, they are going to have to reposition, right? To deal with the Nidus in the main, uh, the roaches in the natural. I guess you could just send your, your bio forces, but it feels like you may want to consider rotating some of those siege tanks around. And that does help out, um, provide more overall of a momentum for those other roaches in the front. Here we are. We are in the ace match right now. One of these players we're gonna have to salute and uh, say our goodbyes to. The other one will be able to move on through together with DRG of this group. We'll be able to partake in the second stage of this tournament. Who will it be? Will it be in the top right side, a blue zerg? Fighting for the Dragon Phoenix Gamer Man himself. He is dark. 
in the bottom left side. Could be him as well, the Red Terran. Fighting teamless right now, but fighting strong. Will he be able to get one victory on the board here? He is a beyond. Now Bjorn starts with a Raven. That would be cool. That would be really cool to see. Instead, though, going for the double barracks here again. He's putting the barracks wall in the front, which is interesting as well. It's a little bit of a mix-up here, isn't it? Is he making another barracks? Oh my god, is he going? No, is he going? Is he doing it? Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. Guys, are we... Are we gonna get Reapers? Are we gonna get Mass Reapers from Bjorn? Is this happening? Are we gonna get Mass Reapers from Bjorn here? Bjorn? Bjorn? Don't... Don't play with me here, Bjorn! Don't play with me here, Bjorn! I think we're getting mass reapers from Bjorn. Alright. Alright. Okay. Okay, let's think this through. Let's think this through. I can't think anymore. I'm too excited. <laughs> I'm too excited. Alright. Overlords. Overlord looking the wrong way here. Well, I guess it's gonna see that snow wall here. That's already a big tell. I think there's supply depot on this side actually already a big tell as well. So... It may just be thinking to himself, all right, this could be a proxy, could be a proxy wreck still as well, right? That could happen. What else could he be thinking to himself? Could be that he's hiding his stuff somewhere else. That most likely won't happen. It's either proxied or it's at the natural base. If it is at the natural base, most likely, you know, it is going to be that triple rex. The triple rex opening here with the reapers. That should be the case. Second reaper coming in as well, Bjorn. Gonna show us how it's done. Alright, that's the first kill on the drone. Oh, shouldn't lose a Reaper though. Okay, does manage to barely keep that alive here. Needs to recuperate the HP bar. A lot of Zerklings. Uh, no, actually not gonna go for the Zerklings. It's just gonna go straight up into the Roach Warren tech. Very interesting way to play this. Is that gonna be too much damage before those Roaches enter the field though? Well, that could occur here. More Reapers coming in. There's a base behind this being built as well. <laughs> a little bit of a friendly fire, Nate, there. Let's see. Bjorn doing well with the Reaper control so far. Starting to take out more and more of these uh, units. Needs to take out the Queens here. They are the real damage-dealing units. Against these Reapers. Okay, I think he did lose... Did he lose two Reapers just now? Uh, yes, he did. All right. Oh, losing a third as well. Oh, dear. That is, this is going the wrong way here for Bjorn. Losing even more right now. Yeah, he's going to have to back up. He's going to have to rethink his plan here. He's lost way too many Reapers now, especially with those Roaches on the field. That did not go as well as he would like it to go. Four Reapers have gone down. That is... Uh, that's almost double his Reaper can. He would have had double the Reapers here. He would have been able to kind of fight against those Roaches in that, uh, in that moment, but... Yeah, took too much damage there. So, all right. all right. Where does he want to take this right now? He forced Dark into a lot of roaches. He forced them into a lot of queens. A third base is nowhere to be found right now for Dark, right? So, these are the, the positives that came out of Bjorn in this situation. The negatives, though, is that he doesn't have a factory completed just quite yet. He doesn't have tech labs. He doesn't have reactors. He doesn't have anything at home, really. Uh, except for, well... A good cluster of Reapers here. How is Dark going to respond? He's going to respond by getting himself another base. Is he going to drone up with this? Is he going to try to get a bit aggressive as well with his Roaches and Ravages? Looks like he's just droning up for now. Okay. Alright. Gun already prepping his supply depots here. You know the... To see any Nidus networks, potentially. Making bunkers as well. He knows he's maybe in a little bit of trouble if Dark ramps up the aggression. It doesn't look like that is Dark's plan so far, at least. Just making more drones. Starting to beef up. Get that economy rolling. And then perhaps come in with a harder hitting force off of the, uh, the lay attack. There's the Banshee coming out as well for uh, for Bjorn. Smart play. He saw the Roaches after all. It's a 
good call there. Snobana, not annoying. Definitely is, but I would like to get some more. Well, I guess he's got a good amount of damage here. Dark is a work account. It's looking pretty darn juicy, though. Third base for Bjorn on the way as well. Only a single Banshee here being built, so not too afraid of the, uh, the counter-aggression. Being met by quite a bit of firepower there on those Reapers. The Benshi really not here to try and get a lot of damage dealt, right? It is just because he saw those roaches and a roach counter attack could have been quite devastating. It's the same reason why he was getting those bunkers there. He did salvage those also. Now, the Benshi can still be utilized in a, in a different way. He's going to be able to get a bit of scouting going. He's going to be able to see what is up. Uh, is Dark still droning up? Is he getting his gases everywhere? What's he doing? Is he just getting a crazy amount of bases? And he's going to be able to deny this base as well for a little little bit if Dark wants to take that one ultimately. He's going to have to send some Queens over there, right? Okay, he's just going to go for the Creeping stat. That makes more sense. <laughs> Ready for dust off. Get that Creep. Ready Get that Tumor. Uh, there we go. Almost. So close, yet so far away. Did he make a turret? Uh, oh, yeah, there. <laughs> that is funny, isn't it? Making a turret in front of his natural, being like, all right, well, if there is more burrowed roaches coming in, I don't want to just straight up die to it this time. Dark. He's, um, he's playing a lot of everything here. Infestation pits, Hydra Den, and there's the Lurkus. All right, so... With the hive tack on the way as well at the same time. Yeah, Dark is uh he's in a quite a solid position here. Looking really good at this moment in time. Beyond what does he have got going for himself? He's uh he hasn't taken any economic damage back at home himself. He's still still looking alright on that work account here. Yeah, would like to see a fourth base coming out as well for him, in, perhaps uh, not too far in the future. As he is trying to get the move out here, perhaps it would most likely still arrive before those uh, before those lurkers get all their upgrades going, of course. And go drop into the main is gonna get scouted out by those uh, roaches. The spore crawling queens will be enough to push this backwards. Deeper into Zerg territory. And... Ooh, they do manage to... Oh, oh, oh dear lord, that is one dead medevac. Two marines manage to escape. But I think this is the more important bit. Will these siege tanks be able to get into a good sieged up position? Only one of them so far sieged up. This... Oh, I'm not quite sure. The Biles taking out two siege tanks instantly here. Third base for Dark also defended. Yeah, Dark is... He's looking really strong right now. This Banshee coming into play finally. It's like, alright, this is my moment. This is why I was created. That's right, you're not allowed to go across the field here with these roaches. You better be wary. That's right, back into your hall. And, uh, well, I guess Dark is just like, oh, just send them some other place where the Benchy is not flying around. He needs to lose, well, he doesn't need to lose, but he wants to lose a couple of roaches here, right? And he wants to lo lose them in an efficient way. He doesn't just want to straight up... Uh, move command them. He wants to get some value out of them. And then open up some supply to slowly but surely get himself into the Lurker. Um, well, Hydralisk and uh, Vipers here. Yes, you will have to get some uh, some Hydra before you go into the Lurker, of course, but... Oh. Man, Dark is everywhere, isn't he? He has roaches in every single corner of the map right now. His creep threat's looking pretty ju juicy as well. He's got roaches even offensively placed. 
Just every time he's like, you know what? I need some more supply. Let me just quickly do another poke in here. Lose a couple of roaches. All right, back up again. Let them regenerate some of their HP. Easy peasy. <laughs> Trading okay against those marines. Uh-oh. Oh, you're kidding me! No, beyond. Uh, ish, ish. Okay, Nidus swim. We have a Nidus swim here. Where is this Nidus swim? There it is. Oh, well, the Nidus network, right? It's the uh, the not so pretty side of the Nidus swim. The side you rather not look at. In we go, that base right there. Is it gonna be cancelled? Yes, it is. Alright, alright. Doesn't really need these roaches, remember? So, losing these, no sweat whatsoever. It's kind of all going according to plan so far for Dark, who's just been able to sit on his throne back in Zerkland over here, taking all the minerals. All the blue crystals. Real regular Heisenberg right now. Growing his empire. More roaches. I mean, again, right? Maxed out. He's like, all right, I can get some more supply into Lurkus now. Let me get rid of some more roaches. Let me see again what is happening here in Beyond Space. Straighting out okay again as well. I mean, how many times have we seen supply depots and such trying to be created here and then just being gunned down there? All right. More drones? He's making more drones, actually. It was like making 13 drones right there. I guess it makes sense. He's only on 85 workers right now. Oh, that's the Lurkus now in with the force as well. These roaches no longer just a small cluster, an outpost of uh, not that significant Zerg units anymore. This could become dangerous. The drop on the top left side is causing a bit of a disturbance, though. It's forcing Dark to move backwards here. Ghost being able to get some snipes off, but... They don't one-shot those lurkers, so not quite being able to uh, shut them down as efficiently as they would like. Ah, still hanging out and about. Nice blinding clouds here on the siege tanks and the bio. And together with a yoink, we'll be able to um, do a lot against the defensive setup here for Beyond, who's desperately trying to hold his ground on this full base uh, economy. Well, it's trading out very unfavorably here as well. Look at that. <laughs> 5.6 versus 9k minerals lost. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Dark. I mean, he still has it, guys, it seems. He still, <laughs> still is able to tango with some of the best Terrans in the world here. Making it look, uh, look rather easily as well at this moment in time. To be fair, this was opened up with those uh, with the Triple Rex Reaper, which didn't do anything, and it delayed quite a bit of Beyond's overall economy. It delayed his tech. It it delays of other stuff now. It's a, it's a scary thing to do, really. It, it, I mean, if anyone can make it work, it's probably gonna be Beyond, or well, maybe Maru, or maybe Clem. <laughs> I think that's about it. The real micro gods. Oh, that's a lot of ghosts. Look at that. Ooh, nice snipes. Not losing a single ghost right there. Nidus Worm in the main base, though. Let's take a look if that got scouted quickly. It doesn't look like it did. That's going to make an awful lot of noise pretty soon. Okay, the Marines do manage to get on top of it. The Marauders, though, not helping out. Only a single lurker does get out, but... That is still rather annoying, of course. Another Nidus does make its uh, way into another place. This time around, the natural base again. Beyond here, not quite finding this out in time. There's an Overseer just chilling here. Which is just barely outside of the vision range of, uh, of Vion. This Lurker. I can't believe this Lurker actually managed to get in here. That is such a pain to deal with right now. And he needs to, right? There's no way you can afford to lose your Ghost Academy. He needs to get rid of this. It's coming across the field, though. Where's the rest of his ghosts? I'm not sure. Yawn! Yawn! Alright, there we go. Nice spread. Overstill. Overseer. Still here. The Oversill. <laughs> Oversill for all your troubles. Okay, against your acne or against your rash. Oversill. 
Um, hmm. Plus three, plus three was also already available here for Dark for quite a while, it seems. It's just a single lurker. <laughs> this is a single lurker. Oh my god, if those ghosts just kept moving like that. Oh, it's scary. There he is again. I mean, we need we need this overseer gone. We need this overseer out of here. Dark is just taking control of the map right now. He's taking the bases that Bjorn is supposed to have. Oh, Bjorn is fighting so hard. He does not want to lose this one, but... I mean, how do you even win from a position like this, that which he's fighting himself in right now? We've seen some pretty good comeback scenarios already from Bjorn. But uh, is this going to be another one? Is it actually going to be able to do anything here? Finally does get rid of that Overseer there. That was such a headache though. That was such a continuous headache. Sniping the Overseers is not a bad call, honestly. We'll be able to then just... Uh, uh, what you call it? Cloak up and deal with the Lurkers that way. Oh, that's... A oh, no, 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 no. Careful, careful. Okay, doesn't lose the ghost. That is the main important thing there. More banelings on the left. Darky is... You know what? Guys, we were we were trash-talking him earlier. I feel bad about that right now because this is... This is rather impressive stuff right here we're seeing. A Nidus Worm in the main base. That is uh, gonna cause again quite a bit of a headache here. He's doing so well with these overseers continuously. Setting up shop on the right side as well. Look at the amount of minerals that he's gaining from this place here. Lurkus at the front. Lurkus in the back. Lurkus on the side. They are absolutely everywhere. I think Bjorn may be in for the worst here. I'm not quite sure if he's going to be able to, uh, to still make a comeback after this, guys. That is... I mean, I've been, I've just, this is just what I've been saying continuously here. But, uh... Well, you know, Cloaked Ghosts, they are pretty darn good, aren't they? Snipe the Overseers and then come in with the Closed Ghost to clean up the, uh, the Lurkers. It's probably the best way I've seen people deal with Lurkers so far. In Siege Tanks, they have the, the clear weakness against the Vipers, of course. It's also a lovely sound we, we are getting from the, from the Ghost overall, so I'm very happy with it. It did equal out the uh, the resources loss tab as well, but uh, well, I want to check out the the income graph here. I don't think it's going to look very favorable for Beyond at this moment in time. Oh, that's some nice shots on the Banings there, not losing too much. That's the Overseers. But again, more stuff here for Beyond getting taken out. It's a scary thing, those Banings as well, just zoning away those, uh, those ghosts right now. Even though it's only four of them here. <laughs> Most of the army of Bjorn taking quite a bit of damage. Sniping the Lurkers. We'll be able to gun this down. Oh, it's still taking a lot of damage though. Alright, now we get to see the income grab. Uh, Alright, I think we've seen enough. <laughs> I think we've seen enough here. Oh dear. Oh dear. So. I mean... It really is a pick-your-own-adventure game right now for uh, for Dark. He's getting himself the melee upgrades also. May as well. May as well. Gun's trying to harass his own base. Well, it's what is supposed to be his own base because that it's now a Zerg base, obviously. I'm not confused with this being a Terran base. Don't get me wrong on that, but it is supposed to be Bjorn's base. Right, we're just getting to see Bjorn here struggling trying to deal with the Nidus Worm as well. Banelings not quite finding those SCVs, but we must be getting close here, right? We must be getting real close. Bjorn, I love you, buddy. But this is not looking all too swell. You're very ill. We may have to put you down. As much as I hate to say it, I think we may have another victory here for, for Doc. <laughs> Guys! I don't know how to how to string this along anymore. I think we can all see it quite clearly, right? 
That's a, that's a man. That's a former shelf himself. After all the damage that he's, uh, he has taken here. And he's trying his best. He's doing some nice micro there against the Lurkers. Look at that. He's actually dodging the Lurker shots with those uh, with those ghosts. It is very impressive stuff here. The micro from Bjorn. But that's just too much stuff. That's just too much stuff. And it's absolutely everywhere. Another base here. It looks like that will fall. Not going to be pulled up in time there. Ghost on the right side. Trying their best to maintain somewhat of a, of a defensive front here. The Bailing's getting on top of the Ghost. Nice split though. And another Night of Swim in the main as well, again, here. Yep, why not? Why not just take another base that Bion is supposed to have? 